So what are some of the best parts about working in the parks? The perks, of course. Working at the parks opens up all sorts of other opportunities. There's all sorts of little benefits that come along with it besides just being at the park and getting a paycheck. For each one, it's a little bit different, but all of them have something special. All of them allow their employees pretty much free admission into the parks anytime they'd like, as long as they're not working. So anytime you want to go play in the park, it was pretty much open to you as long as the park was open. In fact, sometimes the neatest part about working at a park was walking around before the park was open or after it was closed and just seeing it so quiet and lit up. Not only did you get to go in for yourself anytime you wanted free, but they would also give you tickets. At Disney World, we'd had what was called a main gate. The one card would keep track of how many free admissions that you had left and who could use them. You could use that card pretty much anytime you wanted with some restrictions on days and bring in a few guests each time. For Silver Dollar City and Busch Gardens, they would actually give you extra tickets to be able to use to hand either to family or friends. And those numbers would vary depending upon if you were full-time, part-time, when you were working, how long you'd worked, and various things like that. But there was a lot more than just that for perks. Every park you get a discount on purchasing merchandise, souvenirs, and things like that. But there would oftentimes be more. Disney World itself actually has a whole place in the back of Magic Kingdom called the Cast Connection. And that has all their discounted, discontinued, marked down merchandise. It would have things from the resorts and the parks that they weren't going to use anymore. All my dishes I have at home are actually former Disney restaurant dishes that I bought there for about 50 to 75 cents a plate. Yes, my dishes are all from Disney. You could buy glassware that wasn't going to be used anymore, decorations, my Christmas wreath that I put on my door each year is actually from Blizzard Beach, and all sorts of different things like that. Other parks will do that as well. Silver Dollar City has a couple sales every year where they sell off old decorations and various things. You can also occasionally purchase things from Lost and Found that hadn't been claimed. Rather than just let it sit there and pile up or throw it away, the parks would oftentimes have a sale for things that hadn't been claimed. Strollers would be there in abundance, camera lenses, sometimes cameras, cell phones that had never been claimed, and all sorts of other things. I actually saw an artificial leg that had been left once. Who leaves their artificial leg? And they would take all these things and sell them to the cast members who wanted to buy them at a discount and then donate them to charity if they hadn't been sold. One of the other neat things about Disney was a couple times a year, they would also have a big parking lot sale over at one of the side lots in Epcot called the Salsa Sale. Spend a little, save a lot. And they would have all sorts of toys and clothing, things that they were no longer carrying in the park, but they were still very good and just marked down at a great rate. This was one of the great places I would go buy my pins as well. They would have a pin trading day, and on that day, you would spend 10 or $15 for a bag of pins, and that bag could have anywhere from 15 to 20 pins in it. Great deal. I actually had one bag that had 25 plus pins one time. It was a great way to get cheap pins, keep them for your collection, or use them as traders, or give them to guests, and various things like that. The salsa sales were hugely popular though. The first couple days were cast members only, then they would open up to cast members and their families, and then it wasn't until the end that you could actually bring a guest who could then buy things as well. But I love those salsa sales. Our Christmas for five years, a lot of it was bought at the salsa sales at Disney. Another one of the big perks at Disney World was Disney University. Disney University offered all sorts of different classes you could take, but they also offered some really neat tours. There were tours that guests could pay for to go around behind the scenes, and there were limited times when the cast members could actually take those tours free. They offered tours of the train roundhouse. We had a behind the scenes tour of the Haunted Mansion where you could go see how it worked. A behind the scenes tour of Spaceship Earth at Epcot where you go in and see how everything worked in there. You have various other opportunities like that as well. In fact, that is actually from one of the tours that I got to take. We even got our own ears. So that was one of the things that you definitely wanted to take advantage of with working at Disney was all the special things like that. You would also get discounts at other places. I learned very quickly while I was working at Disney World to ask at any restaurant, hotel, or any place I went, do you give discounts to Disney cast members? The worst they were going to say was no, 
but it was amazing how many times the answer was yes. 10 to 20% off of a meal, 10 or 20% off a purchase at the store, 15% off of Skechers, 10 to 15% off of your cell phone purchase, all sorts of things. Now, Disney didn't get free admissions into other parks that weren't Disney. But working at Busch Gardens, we could go to Universal or SeaWorld anytime we wanted. Show our IDs, walk in, have fun at the park. At Silver Dollar City, we got to go to a number of parks free. We could go to Worlds of Fun in Kansas City, Six Flags St. Louis, I got to go to Holiday World in Indiana for absolutely nothing. Great park, by the way. And so that's one of the other nice little perks is you can usually get at least you in and maybe family members as well, depending upon how they have the agreement set up. One of my favorite things about Silver Dollar City working there was they would have agreements with a lot of the theaters in towns and some of the other attractions that because you worked at Silver Dollar City, you could go watch the shows free. Not the movies, but all the theater shows that are all around Branson. You could go around the Wax Museum free, although that one's been discontinued now. I got to go to Titanic free. I got to go out on the riverboat. We got to go to the Dixie Stampede for about $10 a person paying just for the meal. We got all sorts of freebies that way, which made it so much fun. I kind of joked that I had spent about three dollars to $5,000 one year in freebies that we hadn't actually paid for. But you get to know all the people around town that way too. So if you ever are thinking about working at a park, you're like, well, what would I get out of it that's just minimum wage or a little more? Yeah, the pay itself isn't great, but the perks are wonderful. Free time in the parks, lots of friends that you get to work with, free time at other parks, discounts on food, and a whole lot of other things. Those were some of the best parts about the job. Some of the most fun things you got to do was all the special things like that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. It tells just some of the perks that are available when you work at a theme park, but there's a whole lot more too. If you like this, please don't forget to like the video, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Share it with your friends. Thanks so much.